guys, it's Lisa here, and welcome to Esports in 30. Today's Monday, which means League of Legends, and that means Matt Hempstead is joining me today to talk some League. Hello. Hey, so I think before we get into it, because we have a special guest joining us today, we Wild do. Turtle, uh, if you saw her on our socials, it's not a secret. Uh, but we do have a big story to talk about first, so Matt, why don't you fill us in? What's going on? Yeah, so I mean, G2's had some sketchy results lately. They lost this place and had a bloodbath game against Vitality, so it's a little interesting to see what's going on with them. Are they just, you know, we're in playoffs, so we're just going to take it easy and try some new things, or mm -hmm. uh, what's going on? But apparently, Mickey's been having a wrist and hand injury, um, so don't make I'm the joke, please. I'm not going to make the joke. I'm not going to make the joke. Everyone in chat's going to make the joke. I'm not going to make it. It's fine, right? Wrist injury, haha, <laughs> ha. <laughs> whatever. Um, so uh, he might not be playing week nine, and said Promise Q might come in and take some time so he can rest his wrist. We don't know for sure yet. Um, so we're just gonna have to wait and see. But if that happens, maybe an opportunity for some teams to take a win off G2 if they're gonna try some new things or have Ooh. this new support step in. Might not be full strength G2, and then we'll have to see what they can do after they get their bye week. So who knows? It's gonna be a long time before G2 plays with their full roster again. Mm -hmm. Could be a weakness going into actual playoffs. Oh my God! So so much implications this means, this injury means. But before we get into all of that, why don't we take a look at the NALCS with all the highlights? <laughs> Going He's buying a lot of time, and here comes the teleport. Going oh! to the game, and Ken is gonna try his damnedest to knock down Darshan. But if Inglachoth comes through, Draven finally catches it. Here comes LeBlanc. They've got Otto in as well, and he's gone. But the Golden Guardians are now on the opposing Nexus third break. They're going for the end themselves. And having a response, they have to take that down first. But can they stop this TP? They do. Oh my God! God! It is over. And Golden Guardians retain. Control. They're on top of the club, and GGS are alone in fourth place. Level one, now level two, but he has the red buff. He's going to have the first knockup. Oh, There's no way. He misses. He misses the knockup. Sven Skaret's got no way out. PVP, though, here for Licorice and a chase on in. Still being slowed down. Just got the shield. Oh! What a play. Here comes Stopwatch. Here comes Core JJ. And would you believe it? They've got a taste for Licorice. They've all shown up! When can they pull the trigger? Sneaky trying to make something happen, trying to get Baron to aggro and reveal himself over the wall! What? Are you kidding me? The fight is to the other side of this map where they find a knockup in for Licorice. It's a one for zero so far. The shock wave, and it will find two kills now. Licorice on the run. It's an ace, and Team Liquid are well and truly the best team in North America. Down to the bottom side, Vulcan tries to make the play. JJ is going to be taken very low. Piglet trying to get the return kill. Barely secures it with the Akathian Rain, but one more shot from Wild Turtle, as now Lyra is the next one on the chopping block. Turtle's Turtle going. going the Rockets. Super Mega Death Rocket barely going to be escaped He's from Bottom Line. CC coming down from Pobe. Demonte now one versus four. It's him against the World Viper going into the pool once more. Centauran auto attacking the Nexus, looking to take this one down. They will not defend. And FlyQuest finds the win. It's gonna be flash for flash already. Centauran is using his flash now as well. This will surely be first blood. Cashing in on that one as Hakuo is gonna be knocked up in the air. More oh. damage Wild Turtle running and gunning, baby. That's another kill going over to FlyQuest. As now Phoenix and Panda have to try to get themselves away. There's a reason pandas are endangered species. The damage comes out. FlyQuest not needing that last lane of inhibitors. Looking to make the fight happen. They've already blown up the enemy AD carry. Apollo's out of the picture, and now the Lancer's fight is down. Multiple members from FlyQuest going to be taken very low. They finally got the Jax. However, Echo Fox do oh. not have the tools to fight back. The Stace is going to keep Pobelter alive. Wild Turtle's going to keep on popping off. There comes the damage. There go the Rockets. And FlyQuest will end this game 23 minutes in. Now that we recapped a pretty hectic week of the LCS, I think it's time to call up our friend, Jason Wild Turtle Tran. Hey, how's it going? Yo, what's up? Hey, Charlie? you're looking good. Yo, it's been a great weekend for you, huh? Uh, yeah, pretty good, I think. Got two wins somehow, but yeah. Somehow. Yeah, not, not too bad. <laughs> what do you mean somehow? You played amazing. You It was pretty dominant when you look at it, going back. Like, that was, that was a really strong performance from these guys. I mean, sure, you can say that it was maybe bottom of the standings teams, but you take wins however you can get them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true, yeah. So after the weekend matches, how are you feeling? You guys are on the upswing now, right? Uh, hopefully, I think we are improving a lot faster week to week now than we were in the past. I think prior to this week, we weren't really improving as fast mm -hmm. as we could have been. And I think that's due to the fact that we put a bigger focus on our macro game. Mm. 
Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it definitely shows off. The early game was looking a lot better, too. I mean, mm -hmm. Centauran was popping off in the early game, getting early leads. But one thing specifically I want to ask about, Turtle, is Jinx. He played it twice, uh, which is pretty unusual because we haven't seen a ton of it. So what makes Jinx that, that champion now that's, like, your go-to? Um, I mean, I've always played her in the past, and I was just trying her a little bit in scrims and a little bit in solo queue, and it seemed like she was a pretty good champion. So I was like, maybe we can give this a shot, practice, and then it ended up doing pretty well for us. So. Just yeah. picked it ever since. And even on top of that, like, every champion was open. You could have played Lucian, you could have played Draven. But no, it was Jinx. Is that just, like, the, the 9.3 changes to, you know, Infinity Edge <laughs> um, and all that stuff make it so much better? I mean, um, so I worked the, the first day for us on Saturday. Like, our Jinx play was really good on the previous day on Saturday. So we decided, like, hey, why don't I just play Jinx again? And probably look the same. So kind of did. Wait, but second day, didn't you didn't he blind pick it? Like, you blind picked it, right? Jinx. Like, isn't that I, a little cocky? So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Some might say that's yeah, cocky. I don't, I don't know. I was just trying it out. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> that's fun. It works. I mean, one, so, you know, <laughs> it's super fun. Wait, what was the coaching? Like, how was the coaching reacting to, you know what? You were like, I want to play Jinx. It's been good. Like, were they really supportive I mean, of it? I think they were the ones that kind of pushed for it anyway. I mean, we were just sampling it in scrims, and uh -huh. it looked pretty good. So it's like, okay, let's just keep trying it and see how it works. And the coaching staff really liked it. I think they like it more than me, so. <laughs> Well, honestly. Apparently had a different reason though in his interview, didn't he, Lisa? Yes, so I remember on the stream after, I think, the first day, day one, um, you won the game and in the post-interview you said that you picked Jinx because your team is bad and you have to scale. <laughs> Did yeah, you? Kind of. Why I are mean, you playing your team? I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of like our team is still working on like, a lot of issues. I think we haven't really proved ourselves at least, like ever on stage. Like, I'm sure we had like a pretty good early season, but None of our games were really dominant, and we just weren't really playing extremely, extremely well. Mm -hmm. So I would say, from our outsider's pr perspective, it seems like we're playing fine. But from our perspective and our team perspective, I, I think we had like a lot to work on. Even in our wins against Clutch and Echo Fox, we still had like a lot of issues that better team would exploit. So. I mean, even that, though, you guys had the fastest game of the split, which is really impressive. But prior to this week, I mean, FlyQuest kind of had a, a four-game losing streak, which is obviously tough. But this week, the huge turnaround. So I know you alluded to the macro earlier. Is that really just what caused it, or are you just starting to mess with the rest of your teammates as well? No, I think it was uh, due to our, our macro focus. I think all, player, all five players now are trying to work on like what they could be doing better on the map. And overall, it's just made our team a lot better, I think. Jason, you know, you're a very positive guy, but it's probably not easy, you know, going through a losing streak yeah. and trying to keep the, the team environment positive. So what was the mood like, I guess, the past couple of weeks, and how did you guys kind of turn it around? Uh, I think the mood has kind of been a little bit more ur urgent. I mm -hmm. think our coaching staff and the players feel a little bit more urgency to perform now, and I think that's what was missing from us earlier. And overall, I think... That was like the biggest shift in this week to the next week. We just have like a better sense of urgency in like cracking down on player mistakes, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, there's only two weeks left, so obviously the urgency at an all-time yeah. high, and it's a tough schedule for FlyQuest. I yeah. mean, for you guys, yeah. you have uh, Team Liquid next week, Cloud9 in the following week. So Team Liquid specifically, because this team has shown that they're the top notch in yeah. NA. What do you guys have to do, and where do you think you can attack uh, Liquid specifically going forward? Um, I think it's just like player style still like play what we know and just be confident in what we play. I think that's going to be our biggest key, being a look at because they're really good at their own style already. They kind of established the way they want to play. And for us, we're still like fighting a team identity. So I think, oh, well, we kind of found it now, like after this weekend. So we're going to try to figure something out with that and push on. Honestly, I always look forward to seeing Wild Turtle and Double Lift go against right. each other just because when I got into League, that's kind of been the rivalry. <laughs> when you guys, you know, CLG, Double Lift, TSM, Wild Turtle. Yeah, that was the thing, yeah. Where that was big. And also Jinx is a huge thing, too, to see who's yeah. the better Jinx. You know what I mean? Turtle, <clears throat> what do you got to say to that? I don't know. <laughs> He's not a hard champion, I'd say. But, you know. <laughs> Trying to keep it modest. I want to see it. Do you want to into Double Lift and Core JJ? That'd be, that'd be pretty ballsy. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> he doesn't want to leak strats. No, he can't leak strats. <laughs> All right, do you want to break out? Uh, I think Cloud9 and T uh, Team Liquid played this weekend, yeah. and that was a big match. That was the match everyone was looking at, Turtle. Yeah. So it was Team Liquid versus Cloud9, and of course, uh, Team Liquid came out with a pretty convincing victory, yeah. uh, taking down Cloud9. I don't know if you were able to watch the match, but what do you just think of you know, Team Liquid and Cloud9 and the way that these two teams look like they're far and away the top in an A? Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I kind of think C9 kind of beat themselves on their game. I think they underperformed that day. They 
So Skarin, I think he kind of gave first blood really <laughs> easily yeah. to Liquid, so I think that definitely messed up their early game a little bit. And even then, C9 managed to come back, but they also made like another mistake at the Dragon play, so... It's unfortunate things, I, I did think C9 was a lot better than they showcased, but TL was managed to do less mistakes on the day. That, that's totally the playstyle that you can kind of see. Cloud9 is a team that's willing to take those risks and go out there, and sometimes it backfires. Exactly like you were saying, Turtle, Svenskaren just like overdive the mid turret, gave first blood to Jensen, and then that, that's really all it takes. And even then, there was another overdive that gave Team Liquid four kills, and it, yep. it got pretty ugly. So, um, and for TL, they just play kind of constant, and they're like the risk averse team. Do you think that's gonna hurt them down the road, Turtle? They're just like so, uh, just playing safe and calculated. Do you think they need to take more risk going forward, or is it just enough to win in North America? Uh, I mean, it really depends. So, like, if a team is able to exploit them a little bit more, then they would have to change their playstyle. But what they're doing right now works for them, so they don't really have to like change anything until it, like stops working for them. That's so. true. But the issue with that mentality, isn't it like on an international stage, then yeah. they're kind of uh, not ready for it, right? Yeah, I mean, it kind of is, but that just means our whole region just isn't good enough. That's <laughs> pretty much how it is. I mean, so, it's, a, it's a tough uh, spot, but like, what can you do? You can only really scrim against I mean, the honestly, I don't even know. Like, uh, I think like, it's not like any other teams are looking like that insane either. Like, we're, get, we're, get, we're gonna just have to wait till like MSI to see who the best international team is. Mm. That'll be exciting. It's tough. Uh, it's can tough. we talk about another team that I really want to get into? Oh, no. uh, 100 Thieves. Oh, boy. Okay. Mm -hmm. so oh, wow. They're out of playoffs now. <gasps> was, was it official that they're I, out? I'm pretty sure, I yeah. Th I think so, yeah. Oh, I don't know no. if it's mathematically official, but, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so. listen. The start of the season, I was already, like, ready to check out with the jersey, like, in the shop. Like, I was ready to go in on but 100 Thieves. Sorry, Turtle. But luckily, they already, <laughs> so you're okay. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> I was, like, a fangirl, yeah. ready to go for 100 Thieves. But they just... I don't want to swear. Shit the bed. I'm going to say it. Shit the bed. A couple Real times. hard. So what is going on? Like, from your perspective, when you see them Ooh. play, what what's happening? It just seems like they don't know how to play the map, even though, I don't know. It just seems like they don't know how to play the map. But the roster. <laughs> like the, the roster was great. I mean, you bring in Bang like. and uh, already I mean, everyone was, just losing their mind, right? But Yeah, that was like kind of the same. I mean, the thing is, like, you can never shine as a player if you're not playing, like, the team game properly. <laughs> And the only reason you could like look good as a player is if you're already playing the map and just playing the game the right way. That's pretty much how it is. A lot like, of normally, like, yeah. Normally when I feel like I'm in my best individual shape, like my games don't even look that good because our macro is a little bit off. Mm. So if you fix your team stuff, you can start fixing the other stuff. That's interesting. Well, I mean, a lot of it looks like it's kind of a macro like issue with 100 Thieves. They're all over the place. They're not on the same page, which makes you question like Aphromoo. Isn't he supposed to be the shot caller? He's a veteran. Is it a language barrier, maybe? Like, I know Bang kind of knows English. Like I mean, yeah, it totally could be, because Bang is, is no Korean, some days be. Korean. And then, I think even then, you start to lose faith after a while. Even if you're, like, if you're playing with Aphromoo, it's been a while since he's actually been playing at a top level. So I get a little concerned. Mm -hmm. And you can totally see this team is, like, totally disjunct. Onda is, like, engaging and insta-dying, and then the stuff going on across the map. It, it's weird. Do you think... What's the coach doing? Where, where, where isn't probably, probably? Probably help. Probably. What's going on? You know? Yeah, I have, honestly have no idea what's going on with that team. I, I don't think I should comment on it too much because I just don't know. So yeah. He's more willing to shit on his own team than to shit on another team. That's fair. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's because I know my team really well, so I don't know, really know 100 Thieves that well. I don't yeah. really know what's going on behind yeah, the scenes fair. for them. All right, let's stop talking about them. It's making me upset. <laughs> it's making you <laughs> upset. Let's, let's talk, oh, Silas. Let's talk about Silas. That was sure. a big thing this weekend. You said that they are, it's not allowed to be played in competitive right now, right? Yeah, yeah they took it away bad. from competitive. So how did that affect uh, you guys this week? Because I know it's been a pretty popular pick uh, <laughs> in the past couple weeks, and now it's just totally gone. I mean, I, mean, I can't talk about it. That's leaking stress. I can't <laughs> talk about it. So this... You can't be all like, right, it really fucked us over, because it's all we <laughs> went in on. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it can only fuck you over so much if you went 2-0, so... Just fan true, Silas forever. True, true. Maybe Black it actually helps. Question mark? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's enough of any LCS talks. I do want to look at the LEC. So but before we get into it, Turtle, sit tight. Let's take a look at, you know, the highlights that we got. Let's look at it. Yankos is just around the corner here, but Zelsi's on his way as well. Chachi trying to turn it around as Yankos goes in with the wall of pain. That's Klaxon as well. Yankos we down, go. Chachi gets out. That's how you unlock this with Nectar. Need to teleport in soon because Caps Surprise. is going to jump in. Surprise, says Caps. That's two down, a third to follow, and it's all on Kami. He takes out one, Chachi's on the break. Can Kami get the boomerang? in? Can it turn it around for his team? The only man who's been on this team the whole time, it's Kami. And it's a party for Splice, because they run through G2. Splice clean it up. They stand down G2, and they will 
take down the top team in Europe. But they have to be so careful. Oh, crowd shot. Oh, he's dead. Yeah. Selfmade goes golden. It's up to Crownshot. He's opening it up. Cole jumps onto the back line. He gets Crownshot. Mitty's still alive. Patrick's still alive. OG somehow still alive as New Jump Jump falls once again. Epirion has nowhere to go. Can't get away from Cold. I mean, Arjun run away, but Arjun is staying in the base at the same time. Alvari and New Tucker in here. SK ran away from their own base and maybe sacrificed the game. Arjun continue their climb at the NEC table with a dominant win over SK. Ooh, Bwepo manages to connect a full combo onto Soaz. Flash is available for Soaz, he's down to 100 HP. Slice and Dice is not available just yet. One more hit from Bwepo is all that's going to be needed. First blood! Fission, this will cause both teleports to be used. Flash is fought for Fnatic, the cutting is used. Vivivin is down! He had Flash available, he didn't get to use it. Now Soaz is running for his life. He's stunned up, locked down, caught out! And Soaz will try to get some damage, but it simply will not matter. Yes. A spot is on the horizon, a flank over the fight. Oh, Fnatic going for the dive! They've got Hong Sama! They killed him under his tower! Reckless is unstoppable at 5, 1 and 5! Yes. Fnatic truly are back in the fight for playoffs and the finals! Okay, I take it back. Maxwell has pulled the trigger, but it's on to Memento. Febivin gets slept by Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Cataclysm dumps out, and Febivin gets dunked. The damage on the hard sum, he's backing away. There's a million red stacks on the Baron, but the ring can't be popped. Memento and Odo, the combo for a triple kill. Baron is still available to be secured. Here comes up set for one. Misfits, they're done. They're dead in the water. This is just, frankly, frustrating to watch if you're a Misfits fan. You're watching your team slowly oh, lose the game. Man, Odo won. Dodge, dip, duck, dive, cataclysm from Memento. Legendary 11 kills on the trot. Make that a double. And Shulka are one foot closer to playoffs. Broken faces from Soez. Shulka take down Misfits. All right, Turtle, I know you've been busy with NALCS, but we do want to get your opinion on some things that have been happening in Europe. So first off, why don't we talk about Fnatic, because I think that's the biggest story that's come out of Europe, right? Yeah, and yeah. Fnatic's kind of like in an interesting, very similar situation to FlatQuest. I mean, FlatQuest started off the season well, but Fnatic just had a, they started 0-4, mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden they won six straight. They're 9-7 now, so how does a team go from struggling at such a widespread level to all of a sudden finding, finding their form and looking like one of the best teams? Um, I think it's due to a lot of the patch too. I think they probably learned a patch really quickly and were able to keep up with the patches. I think that is what makes a good team right now, just being able to play on every single change, changed patch because it's all pretty big right now. Mm -hmm. And I think for Fnatic, they kind of just lucked out and found like their play style in a certain patch and are able to just capitalize on it now. That's so great too. And that's uh, so great like too. one thing specifically, they lost Caps, right? That's yes. that's their star mid laner. Surely that's going to take a long time to recover from. How long does it take to just like plug and play someone completely new to a team? Like Nemesis came in, replaced Caps. Mm -hmm. How yeah. difficult is it? He's just a to... rookie too, right? It's not like he yeah, had exactly. that he was much brand experience. new to the LEC. How much do you think that affected uh, Fnatic in the early weeks? Um, probably just a little bit. I, I do think like EU has such like talented mids that everyone is like pretty much around the same level. You got to kind of just play around your mid laner real well, and that's pretty much how Europe is, honestly. Yeah, I mean... You really get to play around mid. <laughs> We've seen, like, Abadaga come in for Schalke. We've seen mm -hmm. Humanoid mm -hmm. for Splice, and they just have so many mid lane guys. Um, so even even for you, you, you had to bring in Pobelter uh, off the streets after Team Liquid <laughs> 1 streets. with Jensen. Yeah, it's yeah. not like he was homeless, oh, but I guess. Well, he, he, okay, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. It's fine. It's close enough. Poor Pobelter. Uh, he'll be fine. Um, so what was it like to incorporate Pobelter? I, I know you guys are, you kind of get along. They but played together on Immortals, right? Exactly, yeah. So you guys are homies. So was it, like, did you have to fill that, that bridge of, of, you know, struggling to incorporate a new mid laner, or was it just kind of natural going back to the Immortals? Um, I mean, I think it's always natural nowadays to plug in and play players. I, I don't think, like, Synergy does matter a little bit, but I don't think it's like that hard if the player has like played some competitive games before. So, you know, I always wondered what it would be like the scene if imagine if you sign a player, you have to keep them for like two years. Because I know some players are now signing long contracts, but you still see a lot of changes mid season or like after yeah. a season. Do you think it'd be beneficial to kind of have that like two year minimum you have to play on a team just to let it grow and breathe, you know? Uh, maybe. I mean, probably. I've been on FlyQuest for two years or something, so. That's true. That's yeah. true. And TSM for a long time. Like, I feel like you, yeah. you're you a long term. You're a commitment, commitment yeah, yeah, yeah. guy. He, he likes long term relationships. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it seems. 
<laughs> it's so weird though because even even teams now it's like if you struggle after one split it's like oh we need to make a Cut. change there's, yeah. there's no time for for error and especially for a team like Fnatic who's always you know they expect the great like greatness if you mm -hmm. don't win then you're doing something wrong so it's it's definitely tough to actually try to build something when winning is the expectation especially yeah. in a 10-team league right it's it's hard to make that I think in particular, like, Reckless has always been, obviously, the face of Fnatic, and he's so hard on himself. Uh, yeah. Turtle, have you, like, have you gotten a chance to, like, talk to him, and, like, are you guys good friends or anything? Just playing at international uh, I met, competition. I mean, I met him before at events. We, we don't really talk much. We just say, yo, what's up? That's yeah, like, he just <laughs> seems so, so hard on himself. Yeah. And I guess, I don't know, as a player, like, being in his position, who, I guess, has been so close to the top, the very top, and haven't been able to actually make it, like, how, how do you how do you relate? Like, can you relate to that feeling? I mean, for sure. I think everyone that plays that plays competitive video games always wants yeah. to win. So if, you, if you're not able to achieve like, even a title, it's pretty sad as a pro player, you know. Mm -hmm. Especially when you have the expectations like that on you, it's, you, you just yeah. have to like no jokes, no fun. The opposite of NA, you know the. the <laughs> And is the fun Opposite league, apparently. Why are you flaming Europe like I'm this? Not, that's the meme. I'm not flaming. It's the, it's the memes, okay? It's Reddit memes. It's All not right. my fault. All right, let's move on to another team, Misfits, who's actually, they're known for flaming each other and other teams I a mean, lot. I mean, they're, they're <laughs> looking true to their name right now. It's, it's pretty ugly. Is it? Why? Well, explain to us. What's the situation with so Misfits? So, Misfits started out really strong. They brought in Gorilla, mm -hmm. who obviously has a huge free agent pickup, kind of like bang into 100 Thieves. Yeah. Everyone's hyping up Gorilla to Misfits. And it just, it hasn't worked down the stretch. They've really been struggling. And now it, it seems like other teams have a sense of how to play them. Uh, Han Sama is their main carry. Yeah. But now everyone's just banning Lucian and Draven and, oh. and winning. So oh. I, I know for you, Turtle, obviously, you, you can play a lot of different characters. Um, but how bad of an idea. And like, it's just weird for a team mm -hmm. to not have these backup strategies. Everything yeah. they try to play doesn't work. So um, for you, how do you go about like mastering different things and, and having different win conditions on a team? Because for Misfits, they have the one way to win, and That's other than what? that, it's been losing. Or Han Sama. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just have to pra practice like a way, certain way you want to play. That's pretty much what it is. Mm. You just practice a certain way you want to play. Do like, do, does the team make you go like, okay, you got to come up, come with like five champions that you're comfortable playing, or it's like, do they implement actual like strict guidelines? Like you have to come with this many champions. Uh, I mean, it depends. If it's champions OP, they'll like make sure you play uh, it no matter what. And if you can't just play as a player, then it's like a crutch to the team. And that's pretty much how it is. So it's kind of patch dependent. Yeah. I think it's been especially tough too for some players because it's, you know, it's not just 80 carries anymore. It's like Cassiopeia. It's Aurelia mm -hmm. bot. It's mm -hmm. Yasuo bot. Uh, I know, like, what was that transition like for you to have to pick up mages and, and bruisers? Because I know some players like Hansama hasn't excelled as much mm -hmm. as, as others have. Uh, I mean... Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> what, what was the transition like for you, switching to not just playing AD carries, but uh, also mages and bruisers in the bot lane? I mean, it's, it's certainly not too hard for me because I've played, like, soul lanes in the past. Mm -hmm. But even then, like, I think you should play AD carry in the AD carry role anyway. I think that's... It, I don't think the meta has shifted away from being AD carries because it's still heavily AD carries. And one thing in EU, I mean, there's a lot of top tier teams. You have, you have G2, you have Vitality, you have Fnatic, you have Origin, and it's just the competition at the top is in, incredibly high. Why do you think EU is so competitive compared to like uh, North America, where it's just it looks like bigger. Team Liquid and Cloud9, and mm. then there's a bunch of teams at the bottom of the standings? I mean, I just think it's like uh, the solo key difference. EU just has like higher quality of solo key games, and I think NA the quality has like slowly gone down and down every single year. I don't know what it is. It could be just player base. I, I assume it's just player base, but I'm not too sure. Whoa, whoa. that's such a political answer because maybe all of you aren't like higher in competitiveness. It's just they're all equally bad, so it's closer. <laughs> you, <go>. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Okay, um, that, does that mean? Uh, yeah, you know, it's I'm fine. just saying. I don't know. EU has really gone kind of more south. In it's terms hard to of argue player. though with their like international results, whereas yeah. North America is like it was just cloud okay, nine fine, with fair. a crazy semifinal <laughs> run, and other fine, than that, fair. it's been rough. But uh, one thing too is you see all these. Uh, like European players get more chances. Like you have so many rookie players this year, whereas in NA it's just like imports after imports. Yeah. It, do you see these people in like academy that could potentially get opportunities in LCS teams, or is it really the talent pool that slim in North America? Um, I mean, there has been like a lot of instances where you do play your academy players in LCS. I think academy players do move up. I think JJ was one of them. Viper mm -hmm. was one of them. Like, there's definitely a ton of academy players that move up. So. The system is definitely working. And we saw a couple more this week too. We saw so legal for uh, coming for Huhi. We saw Otto uh, coming for CLG. Yep. A couple of guys there. Um, do you think it's going to be the trend going into the last couple of weeks with a bunch of these teams now kind of you know not looking too good for playoffs? Uh, Are we going to see some yeah, new faces? I mean, 
yeah, if, if a team's not looking too good for playoffs and the player doesn't want to play, a player on the team doesn't want to play, they'll probably just sub him in anyway. So it's a good time <laughs> to see how good your rookies are anyway. So. All right, let's wrap up the EU talk. So right now, just based on the standings, what's, what's it looking like? Who's in playoffs? Who's at the top? Who's at the bottom? Yeah, so G2 is locked up number one. They're good to go. They're going to be kind of, you know, just smurfing and trying some new things out <laughs> in the last couple of weeks. And yeah. now going down the stretch, there's a couple of close races. SK and Misfits trying to sneak into that last spot. Schalke Ooh. currently holding six by a little bit, and they've been on like a really rough stretch. So it's going to be it's going to be tight going forward. Ooh, it's really close. It's exciting. It's exciting. Well, we have to, first of all, choose a player of the week, right? Yeah. I think you chose one, Matt. I did. Who did you choose? Unironically enough, it's not because Wild Turtle's here. This is totally biased. No, it's not Wild Turtle. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's biased, but not like too biased. <laughs> but it's a teammate Santor, and I think he had a really good week getting you guys going early and some of the macro stuff too. So uh, for you, talk about his performance this week and getting you guys at 2-0. Uh, I think he played really well. His communication like around everything was really solid. Like the way he was using our teammates, the way he was playing the jungle was like, he's pretty much like the backbone of our team when we got both our wins. He made the games very easy for me to play, and I think we are oh. all understanding the game a lot better as a team. So, yep. pass off to Centurn. That oh, warms my heart. <laughs> really solid performances on, uh, on Nocturne. Looked really good. So, mm -hmm. going forward, really important. Man Nocturne. All right. Ban so, <laughs> we also want to throw to some fan questions because we posted on our social medias. If you guys aren't following us, go to follow us at Squad States because we asked the fans to submit any questions they had for you, Turtle. And we got, let's see, I chose two. So, let's okay. go to the very first one from 78 Peachy. Who was your favorite support to lane with? Oof. Ooh, you gotta pick favorites. You gotta pick <laughs> favorites. I gotta pick favorites, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ever. I think the best memory for me, at least, uh, maybe not the best, but the best memory and the most memorable support like I played with is probably Lust, but I think he taught, taught me like a lot about the game at the time because he's from Korea and he was pretty much like the first Korean import or second. Mm -hmm. Something like that, and then he pretty much just like taught me, a, or he was like the first Korean support import. So it was cool to see like his perspective and everything he's doing, and his Nami, one v two is like a lot of our lanes. So what is, what is he doing now? Is he still? He's a, he's a he's a coach for TSM, I think, one of the analysts, main analysts for TSM. I Ooh, yeah. can't I be know. friends with that. No. The correct <laughs> answer was JJ. You always choose your current support. <laughs> you fucked always. up, turtle. No, nope, I didn't fuck up. JJ knows. I like playing with him. <laughs> he does <laughs> for sure. Oh, all right, let's move on to the other fan question from Benji, a lot of eyes, underscore, underscore. How do you think League of Legends will look like in five years from now? Oh, that's a really um, tough That's one. a really hard call. I mean, I don't even know what League <laughs> of Legends would be like five years ago. Like when I started playing initially, season three, I didn't even know what was going to happen, how LCS was going to develop. So it's an extremely hard question for me. It would just depend on how the game is, if there's no new games, because a lot of new games are coming out now too. So. Oh, on that note, are you playing Apex Legends? <laughs> No. I'm a, I'm a league one trick. <laughs> oh, that's loyal. He's okay. loyal. You, yeah. One month from now, you can play whatever you want. It's fine. One yeah, month from now. That's true. But I'm a league one trick. All right, Turtle. Thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you guys. It's awesome to hear from you. And hopefully, you guys can keep the that's winning right. streak going. Gotta it's, get it's playoffs. Upturn. Yeah. We'll carry you guys. Shouts out to squad. Yes. <laughs> thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Oh, it was so nice talking to Turtle. So great hearing from you. Always him. a pleasure. Right? All right, so Matt, tell us what do we have to look forward to ahead in the next couple weeks. Yeah, so in EU, I mean, obviously everyone's going to be looking at Fnatic and G2. I know G2 is technically eliminated. Um, or sorry. Eliminated. Not eliminated. They made sorry. it. They've, they've made it, and no one cares about what they do at all yeah, anymore, yeah, yeah. right? Even <laughs> them, they're probably going to try a couple things yeah. and whatever. But you know, with Mikix gone, we pull out some surprises. Exactly. Let's know. see what you can do. But Fnatic's going to want redemption no matter what, and they still have some things to fight for. Yeah. Uh, the first time these two teams played, it was disgusting. G2 <laughs> destroyed them. It wasn't even close. So redemption on the line here for Fnatic, and we'll see what they can do. And then over in North America, uh, I'm looking at FlatQuest versus Team Liquid because wait, we're just spoke with Turtle. Team Liquid is this number one team. FlatQuest mm -hmm. have a big 2-0 week just now. So can they actually fight against Team Liquid? I don't yeah. know. We'll see. I'm cheering for the underdog, let's be honest. Right? Right? I know, always. We want to see Team Liquid down. We're just a turtle, biased. Team okay. Turtle. All right, I think it's time to wrap it up because that's all the time we have. Once again, thank you so much, Turtle, for joining us today. And tomorrow in Esports in 30, we actually have Overwatch League Talk with special hosts, AJ and Ron. Of course, you guys, don't forget to follow us on our socials at Squad State. We're everywhere on that. So make sure to follow. We're going to wait for you there. <laughs>